and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the post-bankruptcy Remington 700. So in the past, we've reviewed the pre-bankruptcy Remington 700. I mean, we didn't call it the pre-bankruptcy version because we didn't know they were gonna go bankrupt. So this review is kind of like a take on, should you give Remington 700s a second chance? Now, specifically the model we're looking at is the Remington 700 SPS Tactical, retails in the US for about $900 or in Canada about $1,200. You can get in 308, 223, 300 blackout and 6.5 Creedmoor, which this rifle is chambered in 6.5. The last one review reviewed, the pre-bankruptcy version was in 308 Winchester. And I think some things you're gonna appreciate over this one, uh, I feel like they did make some progress in the right direction, but I still think there's a really good long ways to go before they offer something competitive at this price. So let's start with the barrel. So this is a 20 inch 5R carbon steel heavy contour barrel that's a one and eight inch twist and it's threaded at the muzzle. You can put a suppressor, you can put a muzzle brake, whatever you want, it's kind of ready to go. So the most important thing about these reviews is gonna be the accuracy. So on our previous review of the Remington 700 SPS, that it did not have very good accuracy. It was kind of lousy. So I have bought lots of different brands of quality match ammunition. I think I have nine. And I think you guys are gonna be pleasantly surprised that Remington did seem to have turned it around in terms of the accuracy department. So let's get started with our worst, working our way to the best, the 127 grain LRXBT Barnes Vortex. So the worst group was 2.09 MOA. So not amazing, but for a worst, that's kind of what I expected. Next is the 144 grain hybrid target. Uh, these are the burgers. 1.72 MOA. Now I don't usually have many rifles in 6.5 that like that ammunition. I'm not sure why I keep buying it, but it's match and they're expensive. So I figured maybe I'll find a rifle that likes it someday, but not today. The Federal Premium Gold Medal Sierra 140 grain, um, 1.43 MOA, not amazing. The Nosler Match 140 grain, 1.05 MOA. I have only found one rifle that likes this ammunition, that actually likes it like sub MOA likes it, and that's the Accuracy International ATX. Every other rifle hates this ammunition, and it's expensive. I mean, if you've had good luck with a Nosler Match 140 grain, let me know in the comments below. I kind of want to know what rifles are actually doing well. I mean well, like half MOA well. Next is the Hornady 120 grain ELDMs 1.02. I find Hornady, most rifles have really good luck with Hornady. So if you just bought a 6.5 Creedmoor, buy like the Hornady Hybrid Hunter, uh, the Hornady Hunter, which is 143 grain, buy the 120 grain, buy their 140 grain, and even their 147. You should have some pretty decent luck with that. The Barnes um, Precision Match 140 grain OTM BT 0.94, so that's okay. Barnes Vortex 120 grain TTSX BT 0.84, it's getting better, it's getting better. The Hornady 140 grain ELD, uh, ELDMs 0.53 MOA. Now we are talking, this is some good groups. This is the kind of accuracy I wanna see out of a new production Remington 700. But that wasn't our best group, our very best group on a three shot group was 0.31 MOA at 100 yards, actually 100 meters. Um, and it looks basically like, th like a two shot group. And I decided, you know what, let's see if we can, you know, keep the consistency going. A fourth shot brought it to 0.95 MOA. Damn. So this rifle can shoot. Well, it's still a good group. So in my opinion, Remington 700, at least in terms of accuracy in the accuracy department, they deserve a second chance. So they've done very well for accuracy. So next, let's do a little longer range shooting. Let's bring it out to 750. Remington 700. 750. So normally I wouldn't do this, but I brought out my um, basically bulk uh, mass produced hand loads. They weren't, they're not made for this rifle, but somehow this rifle really likes them. But the size of the, the case is just slightly chunky for this. Uh, for this one. As you can see, I need to add quite a bit of leverage for it to fit. 
So this is at 750. See if we can nail that, the big one. Yep. We're a hair low and a little right. The wind is gusting. Uh, it's mostly coming from my direction to the target. So it's a little bit weird. I'm thinking this one should be pretty much dead on. Now that's dead on where it was. Not a bad group from where it is. Let's see if we can hit one of those smaller ones. I think we were just underneath. Let's take a last shot. As you can see, they're not made for this rifle. Bam, baby. <laughs> Ooh, this barrel's hot. So it did actually pretty easily achieve those, those targets at 750, so let's bring it to 1,000 yards. There we go. So eight and a half mils up and I'll be on steel. Or I'll be, I should be theoretically dead center. A bit more to the right, two clicks right. Ah, nice foot, too much to the right. So, a little high. It's a little tough, you know. The wind does a lot of, plays a lot of games on you. Nice, dead center. You know what, I think I'm really liking this Remington 700. Had this been the first Remington 700 that I'd ever tried, I think I might have been a Remington 700 fanboy. Unfortunately, it wasn't, <laughs> but I think they're doing a great job at bringing back uh, what they kind of should have been, you know, 10 years ago. Next, let's talk about the action. So the action, in my opinion, well, hasn't really changed since the old actions. You know, they, they're not really improved. They don't feel amazing. In my opinion, the Remington 783, which is like the baby brother of the Remington 700, is actually smoother than the 700. Yeah. It has a 90 degree bolt throw with a kind of small bolt. Now it kind of looks big enough in this video, but once you add a scope on this rifle, like it, it's, it feels small. And especially if you have medium height rings, and normally I use the MDT medium height rings on this. And it, it's like the perfect height for the, the rifle, but with this 90 degree bolt throw, it kind of, it gets really close. Like if I have my uh, throw lever that down all the way on this side, which I think brings me to lowest magnification, it's actually in the way of the bolt knob. So I really feel like the Remington should have done something about, you know, their bolt throw, or at least the, the angle of this, or done some kind of um, bend in the bolt so it would clear that a little bit better. Uh, I mean, I feel like they could have done so much different in their kind of new production ones, but they really stayed true to their pre-bankruptcy version and changed, well, at least the accuracy. So in terms of reliability, it was actually pretty accurate. I did think we have uh, one or two failures to eject, but overall, generally, pretty consistent in terms of feeding, in terms of ejection, in terms of extraction. So no real complaints there. Next, let's talk about the trigger. So this trigger is adjustable uh, between three and six pounds. Now on the pre-bankruptcy version, 
we found that it was barely adjustable. I think it, it adjusted like from one, like uh, between one pound, like from uh, I think it was three to 4.5 pounds or something. Uh, and it, it really felt awful. There was a ton of creep. It was, it was really bad. Um, this one is actually much, much, much better. In fact, I find it's better than the Bergara triggers. The Bergara triggers, while they were adjustable, similar to this, between three and five, um, they had a lot of creep. This one does have a little bit of creep, but the breaking weight is super consistent. So if you don't need anything lighter than three pounds, I would say, you know what, this trigger is going to be just fine. But personally, I really do prefer uh, a one and a half pounds, especially for, you know, PRS or, you know, just bench rest shooting. Heavier than that, and I just feel like it's, it's just not necessary. It's excessive weight, and it could make you pull your shots a little bit more. Uh, so in terms of aftermarket support for triggers, in our last one, in the pre-bankruptcy version, we went with a Kdex DX2 Evo, which gives you the option of having a single stage or a dual stage trigger. And they break like glass, and you can either have the two stage, which is super nice, or the single stage. I would recommend that one strongly. Also in terms of aftermarket support for triggers, there's Timney as well, and there's lots and lots of other companies. Uh, next, let's talk about the stock. So this is the Hogue Overmolded Stock. Yeek. It's, it's, I mean, you know, it's not terrible. It's just really not great. Um, just for one thing, if I just put the, the weight of the rifle on this stock, it is no longer free floated. Like, like that's the bare minimum. For a rifle that retails at $1,200, I just, just expected it to be free floated and aluminum pillar bedded, which it is aluminum pillar bedded, but not free floated. This stock is pretty flimsy, but it's comfortable. You know, if I was shooting offhand, I really don't mind this rifle, but the minute, you know, I'm on a bench rest, I prefer a much more vertical grip. Also, there's no adjustment for comb height. It's, it's really a plain Jane stock, which is why I upgraded mine to the MDT Timber Frontier. Now this gorgeous rifle, don't mind the tape, they're actually just holding in the bolts just so I can put it back in here after the review. Um, this gorgeous stock is where my Remington 700 is going to lay to rest. Well, actually lay to work. Um, on the front, if we start with the front, it's got M locks all along the bottom here, which I can put a uh, Picatinny rails here. These are my MDT Picatinny rails, and these are Sunway Photo Arc rails. So you can put these in M locks, and they're going to go just fine. So it makes it really convenient if you want to shoot off a tripod, or, or you know, a bipod off the Picatinny, or if you have a bipod that takes Arca, that's pretty awesome. So the M locks give you really lots of options here. It's also free floated once you put it in this stock as it should be. And it's got basically an aluminum chassis that starts right here and works its way to the back. You have two different options in terms of grip. This is like a nice 90 degree vertical grip. I much, much prefer this one over the more 45 degree one just because of the way I shoot. If you're maybe shooting off hand, the other one, well, you know, I still think this one's probably more comfortable. It takes AICS magazines, as it should and uh, it has an adjustable comb height and adjustable length of pull, and it has a vertical adjustment butt pad here. So it really it has everything covered for you. It's not particularly a PRS rifle, not that you couldn't use it for that, but in my opinion, without let's say a bit more prominent um, barricade stop right here on the front, that kind of limits it to more of a designated long range shooting kind of rifle, and which is exactly what this rifle is gonna be. So if you're looking for an awesome replacement stock for the Remington 700, most of the time that's what we're doing. We're buying this uh, Remington 700 in this format for its barreled action, just to throw out that Hogue over mold stock. And we're always looking for something um, interesting to put it in. And this one is kind of like my spicy, new, sexy stock. So if you guys are looking for something interesting, check out the MDT Timber Frontier. Also in this video, we were using the Discovery ED PRS. So if you are in the market for a affordable uh, high value optic with ED glass, 32 mils of internal adjustment, 10 mils per revolution, fit and finish that's pretty decent and at a really good price, check out the Discovery ED PRS. You can find them at cdnprecision.com. That's actually a scope that I have decided I would retail. So I'd been thinking for a while I would start um, you know, my own online store, but I was kind of waiting on the right product. And I think I found it with the Discovery EDPRS. So retailing in Canada for about $560 Canadian, it's a steal. In my opinion, it's probably the best value on the Canadian market. In the US, it retails for about $400, so it's an amazing value even in the US. So if you're looking for something to get you shooting long, uh, long range or for PRS, that's the rifle scope I would recommend. And if you would like to support me and the channel, consider checking one out at cdnprecision.com.
Next, let's talk about aftermarket support. So this rifle is probably the rifle with the most aftermarket support available, like in terms of barrels, like you cook out this barrel, don't worry about it. IBI barrels, JC Custom barrels, everybody and their mother makes a barrel for the Remington 700. And they're pretty cheap because they kind of mass produce the aftermarket ones. Um, you can get aftermarket triggers. As we've mentioned, the Timney, the Trigger Tech, the Kdex, they're everywhere in terms of triggers. The Stocks, the MDT uh, Frontier, uh, the MDT ESS, the MDT XRS, the Kdex, everybody makes a stock for the Remington 700. Rails, this is the MDT 20 MOA rail. This is typically what you're gonna want if you're gonna do long range shooting. Get at least a 20 MOA rail. It's considered like a standard. If you're gonna do extreme long range, maybe consider a 40 MOA rail. So lastly is the warranty. Now this is something I want you guys to kind of notice. Um, I'm gonna read this, it's, it's a little bit long, just bear with me. So Remington Arms LLC is elected not to provide any written warranty, either limited or full, rather than to attempt to comply with the provisions of the Magnus Moss Act and the reg regulations issued there under. There are certain implied warranties under state law to, with respect to sales of consumer goods. Firearms returned to Remington Arms for service will be evaluated to determine if the services will be provided at a fee or free of charge. Remington Arms LLC is a newly formed company. Now this is the part I want you to pay attention to. Remington Arms LLC is a newly formed company that acquired Remington Firearms Division from the Remington Outdoors Company. Due to the nature of the acquisition, Remington Arms LLC is unable to honor any warranty or recall offered by the Remington Outdoors Company. What does that mean? Anything pre-bankruptcy, you are out on your own. Anything post-bankruptcy, they will service. Now, the good thing is, mostly rifles don't generally need much warranty work. And they're pretty simple to fix. Like, if you have an ejection, extraction problem on your pre-bankruptcy version, your usual, regular, everyday gunsmith if he's competent, should be able to resolve that matter. So my overall thoughts on the Remington 700. While $1,200, yes, they have improved the rifle at the same price, but there's a lot of things I feel like they kind of fell short on. Like the hinged floor plate in the stock. Like, you're offering this for $1,200 or 900 bucks US. The Savage 110 Tactical has, for the same price, offering a lot more, and they are very comparable in terms of accuracy. They have a good trigger, they also have a 90 degree bolt throw, but they have an oversized bolt knob. They take AICS magazines in the factory stock. They have an aluminum mini chassis in the factory stock. They have an adjustable comb height. Well, I mean, you gotta kind of replace things. And you can, I think, adjust the length of pull. So they're offering a lot more than the Remington 700, so yes, if Remington 700, if Remington was seeing this as, you know, this is a race against ourselves, um, they would have won. But if they are seeing this as this is a race against everybody else, if this is a competition against everybody else, in my opinion, they're still not necessarily ahead of the game. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys enjoy seeing my opinion on various different rifles, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. And if you want to support me, consider checking out cdnprecision.com. If you want to buy some t-shirts, we have t-shirts. Now we got some merch, we got t-shirts, we got scopes. If you're in the US, you can buy them. If you're in Canada, you can buy them. And thanks for watching Epic Arms. I almost said affordable optics and rifle reviews, but uh, <laughs> that's the old name.